Hi, I'm Sue Rabadi, and we're here today with Dr. Amanda Baton, clinical and nutritional psychologist. Um, we're going to ask her today some questions about um, ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And I guess I'll start with, um, do you work with a lot of people who have ADHD? I do work with a lot of people who have ADHD. I see a lot of uh, younger people, and it started with me doing neuropsychological testing for uh, evaluating learning disorders and attention deficit disorder. So what ages do you see and treat most often? Primarily, I would see children over the age of seven up to young adulthood. We can't diagnose for ADHD prior to the age of seven. Is it easy to diagnose for ADHD? I mean, quite often the parent well, is approached by the teacher. I, I think that there is a lot of diagnosing going on that um, is not accurate and not reliable. And the, the best way to, you know, all we really have is uh, scales and, and ways to address behavioral problems but through neuropsychological batteries, which can be five hours long, which test for all the strengths and weaknesses in terms of brain function, we can determine whether someone has attention deficit disorder or a specific learning disability. But what's happening in the schools and what's happening in the psychiatrist's office and the, and the uh, physician's office is could be as simple as a checklist and or just determining that the behavior is uh, difficult and the child needs to be dealt with and so ready uh, readily available diagnosis, unfortunately. And is it overly diagnosed? Can I would say, say that? that attention deficit disorder is, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is now in epidemic proportions that it's being over diagnosed that we can talk about at least three to five percent of school age kids being diagnosed and then of that percentage of kids, a, a, a huge percentage being medicated standing online at school every day and picking up their psychostimulant medication. Is it easy to confuse the diagnosis of ADHD with other issues that children have? Sure. I mean, we can see oppositional defiant disorder, conduct disorder, inattention, difficulty focusing. Hyperactivity does not have to be attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. You know, a kid could just need more physical activity, and I think that we see that a lot. That, these school programs now don't necessarily accommodate or think about kids' physical activity and how important that is. So if a kid's stuck in a classroom all day, they're going to be hyperactive. And we see this more with boys. Boys are more, uh, boys are diagnosed more often than girls are because they tend to be more active and, and draw more attention to themselves. If your child is diagnosed with um, ADHD, what are the most common medicines that are prescribed? Primarily, we see a lot of Ritalin. Now there are so many medications. There really are. This is a billion dollar industry, pharmaceutical industry for um, uh, medication for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I could probably tell you 15 medications, but I think the ones that I see most often are Ritalin, Focalin, Concerta, and Adderall. And what are the long-term effects of a child using Ritalin? If a child, for example, uses Ritalin from the age of 7 to 12, and then, you know, gets weaned off in whatever way. First of all, it's easy to wean them off. But secondly, are there going to be issues when the child is then 40, 45 years old? Well, unfortunately, we have no idea what the long-term effects are of using these medications. We do know what the short-term effects are. And, you know, using a psychostimulant, we don't really know the reasons why it helps with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, but we do know that these medications have a calming effect and, and have an effect that helps these kids then as a, as a secondary uh, response be able to focus more and to sit longer. So uh, those are the positive um, effects. The short-term side effects of these medications can be nervousness, agitation, um, sluggishness later, after the medication has worn off, decrease in appetite, weight loss based on this, um, a numbing, a kind of uh, um, distressed um, slowness later again also. Uh, and there is a suppressed growth rate in these kids and that can, that can be remedied later on after the medication, but we really don't know. The dangerous and scary part of this is that we really don't have any long-term studies, so we don't know what the long-term effects are of these medications. But I will say that Ritalin, when abused, 
has the same effects or can have the same effects as cocaine. So, uh, you know, we can see overdosing in, in and uh, a um, tolerance to it, a dependence to it. We don't know. This, is, this could be scary stuff. Are there alternatives to using medicines? In my practice, this is really what I focus on, that there are, there are a few things to first think about with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. One is, are the parents effectively parenting? And if that isn't happening, in other words, can I help the parents understand that with uh, predictability and limits and consequences that this actually helps a child to feel more calm and to be able to focus? So that's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, is, is, is the chi get, child getting adequate nutrition? And often, when there's too much sugar or, or cravings, a lot of times kids with attention deficit disorder have cravings for a certain single food. And so there's nutritional deficiencies. So that's a big part of it, too. Then I ask questions that have to do with have there been uh, long-term use of antibiotics? Is there um, eczema or other skin disorders, redness of the ears, um, dryness of the nails and skin? So that leads me to, is this child, is your child deficient in certain supplements? And one supplement that I use a lot of is the essential fatty acids, or the omega-3 and omega-6, and even primrose oil. And so when we supplement, these kids with the omegas in conjunction with having a healthier diet, which is it's more complicated also because a lot of the kids with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder have allergies or food intolerances. And so if we can determine through an elimination diet, we take out certain foods that are highly allergic foods, foods that are sensitive to most people, like corn, wheat, soy, cow's milk, um, if we take that out and, and for a two-week period and then introduce those foods back in, we're able to see, is that child just having an allergic reaction to the food, which can look like the hyperactivity or the attention deficit, you know, the distractibility. So there's lots of ways to approach this. When I ask parents to take out food, foods that have artificial flavors, colorings, dyes, preservatives, we see a, a, a significant decrease in the symptoms. So again, it's a combination of effective parenting, of finding the appropriate school setting. Does this child need special accommodations based on their um, distractibility? And proper nutrition and supplementation. So we really can see great improvements that way. So I'm not, I don't believe that medication is the necessary conclusion for most people. That's been you, my experience. You mentioned antibiotics, long use of antibiotics, and I'm sorry, that just stuck out at me. Um, the other, the skin rashes or red ears could be food allergies, but right. why did you mention long use of antibiotics? Because what we can see with long-term use of antibiotics is some yeast overgrowth, and with yeast overgrowth, uh, you can have some of those same symptoms that I was talking about, both physical symptoms and the psychological symptoms. So you can clear up yeast overgrowth with taking sugar, first of all, and primarily taking sugar out of the diet. They're just clues when trying to figure out how can it, does, does this child have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or could it be any of these other number of things that are happening? And if it is any of the, through the process of elimination and asking these questions, if it is any of these other things or a combination of these other things, how can we treat that without having to turn to the stigma of putting this kid on medication and the, the unknown long-term effects of, of putting these kids on, on medications that we don't know a lot about? Will kids just grow out of ADHD? What happens if you don't treat it, if you just go along? Uh, if you're not treating with behavioral modification and the proper adjustments to diet, and or medication, it's the same way, it's, it, you get the same result as you would if you're not treating someone for depression or anxiety. The symptoms will continue, the patterns will continue, and that, that I think that, that there needs to be intervention as soon as there is concern on the part of school or the parent. And I just want to 
re-emphasize how important it is to consider, is this child in the right and in the appropriate educational setting? Because when you take a, a, a distracted child and you put that child in the front of the room, or you give that child a little bit more time to take a test, that can, that can provide a lot of reassurance for that kid and make a lot of difference in terms of their academic performance. Is ADHD a lifetime sentence then? Are, would they be in therapy or on medicine forever? I don't think so. I really mm -hmm. don't. I, I, what we do find, though, I will say this, that kids who were not diagnosed, well, ad, uh, let me say it this way, adults who come to me with symptoms that they think are attention deficit symptoms, and they were not diagnosed as, as kids, spend their lives compare, have spent their lives comparing themselves to other people who have an easier time learning or sitting or, or reacting or whatever it is. So then there's secondary symptoms, and that can be depression and anxiety. So if not treated, again, without intervention at the, at the initial period of concern, it can snowball into a series of other manifestations of affective disorders. So I don't think, to answer your question more simply, I don't think it is a long-term sentence. If you're diagnosed at seven years old with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, as long as the proper interventions are in place. And I strongly believe that when children are getting proper nutrition and limited TV time and behavioral modification in the right way is that they're going to thrive. Good. Well, thank you. That sounds like a hopeful outcome. I appreciate your time today. You got it.